guys, Haas with Haas Games and Cards, and I hope you're all doing awesome, because you all deserve it. Um, what do we got going on today? Well, first of all, I'm sorry. Um, I'm a little bit sick. My voice is definitely not happy and stressed, and it's probably going to cut out in the middle of this. So I apologize if I have to take an extra swig of water. My bad. <laughs> uh, we're not feeling super great today. Um, but, I mean, there's just so much going on. And I'm going to have to make two videos about our two biggest hot topics going on in the Pokemon community, I'd have to say. Definitely have to make two videos. But today we're going to talk about one of the hot topics going on. So, um, first of all, I wanted to say thank you guys who've been, or to everyone who's been watching our most recent videos. We got a lot of views, a lot of views relative uh, in perspective. I mean, bigger creators obviously get a lot more. Um, but for me, these were some milestones, uh, cause usually I only get a ton of views when I do like PSA reveals, things like that, which we have a big 85 card reveal coming up by the way. Um, usually I only get good views on that. So I appreciate everyone that has tuned in, that has liked the material, commented on it. It really helps out a ton. If you guys, uh, would continue to comment, like the videos and subscribe and all those things again would be so appreciated. You all are awesome. If you feel like supporting us in other ways, we do have some fun products to help, uh, support you guys and us. Um, these products just help us get more allocations for English product, Japanese product, all those things. We're a Pokemon LLC called Haas games and cards. Um, and so one thing we do have is we do have a mystery product where basically for easy entry limit of eight bucks, um, everything, uh, or each product that's bought, it goes through a randomizer and there's a ton of different things, but at worst you get a booster pack. Um, at best you end up getting, we have PSA 10 Lugia in there. We have other PSA 10 slabs. We have tons of sealed product, especially product that's getting expensive. Twilight Masquerade, 151 UPCs, 151 ETBs. Uh, stuff that's just going through the roof and tons more. I mean, you see Shrouded Fable there, 151 Japanese. And we also added our hot topic. <laughs> we have multiple booster boxes of Surging Sparks in the game. So basically, like I said, at worst you get a booster pack and it's slightly overpriced from a normal price of a booster pack or you end up getting some crazy expensive like a Surging Sparks booster box or a PSA 10 Lugia. So very cool. And also... We are still doing pre-orders of our Terrestrial Festival. We're almost out um, from what I ordered from my Japanese vendor. So if you are interested in that set, grab some. We, we probably won't have a ton uh, soon. We're, we're running low on stock from what we have ordered up. So definitely jump on in. Thank you guys so much for the support and the love. You guys are so cool. So our hot topic is going to be Pikachu. A lot of people are hoping and just wanting Pikachu to dump down in price. They're like, <coughs> oh, sorry. <coughs> They're just like, yes, Pikachu, we want it. Please go down in price. And there's some hot takes on it. I mean, the, the consensus, you know, a lot of people do want it to dump in price. They want these booster boxes to go down. They want it to dump in price. So the question of the day, is Pikachu going to dump in price. And there's a few different things we have to look at to see if it's going to happen or not. Um, and then I'm going to give my opinion, my take and the supporting information that I have seen that would say, yeah, it could, or maybe no, it won't, but let's take a look guys. Let's take a look. So, Oh, my baby is waking up let me pause this real quick and I'll be right back. All right, sorry about that. Toddlers, you know, have a daughter that's almost two. They don't agree with YouTube time. <laughs> it's well past her bedtime. And, uh, of course, while we're recording, she wants to make sure that, uh, I don't know, she just wants to check up and make sure I'm still around. So, there we go. Um, so, we have to look at the booster boxes and what they're doing. So, I know a lot of people want this and Pikachu to dump in price. A lot of people are not happy about paying MSRP. 
Um, I know booster boxes haven't hit MSRP points for a long time, especially at release. And they're usually traditional to, wow, if I can speak today, they're, they're used to basically booster boxes coming out at under a hundred bucks a box or right at a hundred bucks a box. It stays that way for a long time. And then sometimes they'll dip under that or there'll be a reprint. It'll go even lower, you know, things like that. A lot of people are just super expecting booster boxes to stay like that. Um, there hasn't been sets that have had a lot of hype in them with them for a long time. And uh, to be honest, I think the days of, you know, cheap booster boxes out of outside of the pre-order time period, because pre-orders, obviously, booster boxes are going to be one price. And then after release, usually changes up a little bit. I think those days are gone. I think those days are gone. Um, and this is one set that kind of shows that. And we'll talk about how that correlates with Twilight Masquerade in a minute. But, I mean, we started out... I know when I was pre-ordering mine, I did the same thing every other store did at the very beginning of their pre-orders. I was like, oh yeah, you buy a case, I'll do it for like 605 You know, 610 605 that was, that was what we were doing for like Stellar Crown and other sets like that. But those sets didn't really have a ton of hype. Um, and so who knows where they were going to go. This set, we're like, oh yeah, there's a Pikachu... And then people people saw that Pikachu had a crown and they leaked the art. And I remember a lot of people being like, I don't like that card. I don't like the crown. I don't like anything about this card. But then and they're like, even the artwork sucks, you know, from the from the top up. It looks like a uh, full art card, you know, and from the bottom, you know, you got some grass and stuff like that. And then it kind of looks like an SAR in that respect. But other than that looked like a slightly more glorified full art. And so a lot of people didn't like the Pikachu, but still there was a ton of hype for this set. Um, and, and it just started off as this weird thing as people were like, I don't know where this set's going. There's some hype, but people don't like the Pikachu. That's the big hit of the box. But And then all of a sudden, pre-orders just start going ridiculous. And the booster box prices start just getting ridiculous too. They start going all over the place, as you can see with TCG Player. And where we're at right now is we're at, you know, you can get it for about 161, but there's a pretty good history here. 161, 175, 174, 174, 175. There's a ton in the 170s. So this is still trailing up. This is still very much so trailing up. And one thing you have to look at is there's only 429 on TCG player. There's not even a ton listed. If that doesn't show you where demand is at, then I don't know what will. Um, <clears throat> demand is definitely high on this set. If there's only 429 currently posted, only 50 sellers, 429 left. This box is going up and up and up and up. It had like a little... Point where it wanted to stop there and it's like nah just kidding we're gonna keep going up and i remember cases were going for like eight to nine hundred bucks before uh the set even came out that's how big and hype this set was even though people didn't like the crowned pikachu so very interesting thing and it seems like once pikachu start hitting a certain price point all of a sudden a lot of the people i know really wanted pikachu they're like well wait i want pikachu um but they wanted it at, like, the entry-level price. They wanted Pikachu when it was, like, pre-release prices, even. And historically, pre-release prices on a card are much higher. And then the set comes out, dips down a little bit, and that's where pe people like to get the card, right? I think if you didn't get it at its pre-release price, when it was, like, 200 ish bucks, um, yeah, you're not going to get that again, probably. But like I, like I said, I'll dive into a pure opinion coming up. Um, because we got to go over the data first, right? Before I can even say what my opinion is. So booster boxes are not going down. They're in the 170s now. That's a fact. That's not going away. That is happening. So even looking at eBay last solds, 169. If I remember correctly, there were only... I don't remember how many boxes were up 
were up on the on eBay, but not a ton. 169 to 170. So even on eBay, that's where we're at too. And then let's go to the Pikachu itself. Pikachu, 633. If you look at the data of it, and look, just nothing but up. Started at 300, boom, all the way up, all the way up. So 645, 625, 630, 650, 650, 660, 425, 425, 599, 598, 624. Now there was a crazy one down here that I saw the other day. That was like 700. I don't know if I'll be able to find that again because there's so many cells, but there was one for like 700. If that doesn't show what people are willing to pay. And to kind of show the demand of this too, over 141 have sold at these higher prices. There's only 29 left. Only 29 left on TCG Player. So is this going to go down in price? Are more packs going to be ripped? Is, and, and as more packs get ripped, is this Pikachu going to get hit more? And is it going to hit the market more? I don't remember the exact ratio, but I think to pull any specific SAR, it was like 1 in 900-ish packs, right? Um, that's going to be harder with less booster boxes on the market. Um, when I got this allocated, I did not get nearly as much um, product as I wanted to. Not even close. Not even close. I didn't have to cancel orders because I had a big enough buffer. Um, but did I even get to keep a personal stock of this? No, I did not. I wish I could. But I wanted to make sure all my customers got their orders fulfilled. Um, so product is definitely a lot less than other sets on this one. That's one thing to remember. And you have to remember supply, only 29, and demand. There's so many people that want this card. There's more than 29 people that want this card. So think about that for a minute. PSA 10. This one is at 41 bids, ends in 12 hours. We're at $3,150. $3,150. So, I mean, we, we had this data. This is now a fact. Pikachu's in the 600-ish range, okay? Now we have the PSA 10, 3,000-ish range, and it is ending in 12 hours. Someone is going to be paying more than $3,000, and who knows where this goes in 12 hours. I'm going to have to watch it. No, I have to sign in. Okay, I'll watch it on my other account. But in 12 hours, someone's going to pay at least at least this, but probably more. Probably a lot more. People are going to bid the hell out of it. Another thing to look at, if you're looking at eBay, there's only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's only eight of these posted right now. A lot of them still have a lot of days left for bids. This one, 12 hours. This one is just posted for a static 2,000, um, 2,298. So people are watching this one. They haven't bought it. <clears throat> You'd think whoever just lost their bid at 3,000 would be like, well, instead of going in for 3,100, we're going to go in for this, uh, this one right here. <laughs> but no, that's not happening. This guy has theirs posted for $2,299. But again, nothing below a grand. So you'd think these two, okay. You know, you'd think whoever lost in this bidding war would jump over to here. And then we have this one, two days left, 16 bids, already over a grand. 15 bids, already over a grand. This one, no bids yet, but it still has six days. This one has four days, 29 bids, 1,700, so going up to two. Two bids, almost 1,500, nine days left. That's a lot of days left, guys. That is a lot of days. Um, if we go to last sold, 2,000. 3,100. Some kind of offer that was taken, probably still in the 2000s, as we've been seeing with the current posted data. And again, demand is hot. The demand is hot for this right now. There are a lot of <clears throat> there are a lot of people wanting that in a PSA 10, and barely any posted. You know, that's it. There's there's not much more data than that, but that's the data that we have to show that people are willing to dish out that much money for it. 
So we're going to show other other examples of why of what could happen with this card. But before we do, I'm going to go into my opinion. Okay. I think people wish this card would go down because they're FOMOing and they wish they would have gone this card either when it was like two to three hundred bucks and they wish they probably would have picked up more booster boxes back during pre-order times because a lot of people aren't used to having to pre-order stuff and they just haven't um, because they're used to getting cheap booster boxes all throughout the year, uh, especially on a newer set. I mean, that's what's been happening with a lot of things, minus like 151. Um, and yeah, I, I think, and I'm not an expert, but I don't think that's going to happen. If this card does go down at all, it's going to dip down a slight amount. It's going to go down just a little bit, um, but not by much. And if it does, it's going to go down a little bit and then pop back up over time in not a very long time. I think this card's going to continue to climb even through December because uh, the demand is there. You don't get you don't get a ton of let's see. Yeah, you just don't get a ton of postings. The demand is there and it's a hard thing to pull. So with that being in mind, I don't think it's going down. I think it's going to continue to climb. And I think people, the ones that you hear a lot of the time saying we need reprints, we need X, Y, and Z and stuff like that. The set just came out. None of that's going to happen. And on top of that, I think they're the ones FOMOing the hardest because they had opportunities to jump into this while they could, and they just didn't. It just didn't happen. So anyways, sorry, had to put the baby back to sleep again. She is not wanting to stay asleep. So if I miss kind of the point I was driving home, I apologize about that. So um, with the point I'm trying to make, it's not the popular opinion. Um... I think a lot of people are just having some FOMO and <clears throat> they're just really down that they didn't take advantage of the opportunities that they had that could have netted them this card or even get, got themselves some booster boxes at a cheaper price. And we're going to make a separate video about this, but guys, there's a couple reasons why you're in the hobby, right? You're either in the hobby to collect and any kind of collectible hobby has a price to it. And every price to that collectible hobby is tied to demand. And so there's going to be some things that are just worth a ton more. I mean, of course, a first edition PSA 10 Charizard going to be astronomically more expensive than any current card out there. You know, and there's not a ton of them. Demand and supply, uh, for sure. And so, I mean, not the best example, but kind of similar there's, there's just, you know, you either buy this product to rip it because it's fun. And if you're doing that, sweet, you know, it might be a little bit more expensive to rip it. But again, that just has to do with demand and popularity of the set. Or I have a lot of people tripping out about investments and we're going to make this investment video too. But if you're buying a booster box because you're like, oh, I want to invest in this, right? That means you're you should be expecting to hold on to it for like five or more years. Like you don't buy a booster box claiming it to be an investment to try to flip it in the next less than a year. <laughs> and you don't try to flip it in a couple months in the next year or whatever it is. You try to do it when it has good time to grow and appreciate, which is usually about five years. So I, I think a lot of people are claiming investment stuff without really having the mindset to do it because they don't have the patience. They have some bad FOMO. They end up wanting to rip it and then they rip it and then they regret it because they only get $40 worth of cards out of their $160 box. Um, guys, that's not how it works. If you're, if you're buying to invest, you got to hold on to it for a long time. It's not going to go where you want it to go in a year or less. Um, if you were lucky and you did pre-order some of this back when you could, then sweet. But now it's at MSRP. And so the good deal now, whether you're ripping or collecting, is getting this at MSRP. 
Um, and I'm going to say that about prismatic evolutions. If you are getting prismatic or this set for any reason at all, MSRP is going to be the good deal because it's going to be hard to find prismatic anywhere at MSRP. That's how 151 was. 151 came out um, after pre-order stock was out. Um, you're paying MSRP because the cheapest place to find it at that point is at your local grocery store. That's just how it works. Prismatic is going to be the same. So, and I'm just trying to keep it real. I don't mean to sound like a, a, a mean dude or whatever, but you have to be honest with yourself. You have to be honest with your goals, what your intentions are, um, and what the market's currently doing. You have to be honest with yourself or else, otherwise you're going to set yourself up for disappointment um, and not, and you're just not going to be happy, you know, and this, this is a, this is a collectible that is meant to make people happy. You may not be able to get this Pikachu for what you wanted, but there's going to be other sets, other opportunities that are awesome. And nobody even liked this card to begin with, <laughs> you know, nobody liked this artwork. They thought it was lazy and kind of stupid. Um, I personally like it. It's not my favorite of the set. I like Hydreigon the best, to be honest. Um, and I'm sorry, guys, my voice is dying. Um, but yeah, so it's just funny what a number and a value can do to something and people's perception of it. Because at first the perception was, wait, that's it? That's our first secret illustration rare Pikachu? And now we're here. People see this big price tag and like, wait, I want a chance of that Pikachu. Not how that works. And it's unfortunate, but it is not how that works. Um, <clears throat> so there's a lot or get, get whatever you can at MSRP. It's a good deal, but set up good expectations. Don't buy this to invest, to just try to immediately flip the value doesn't happen like that. So for those who are saying, no, it has to drop. It must drop because prismatics are going to come out. Prismatic will come out and it will take the hype away from this set It'll make the Pikachu much cheaper. Um, and that's when it's going to be a good time to strike on Pikachu. And that's our battle plan. <clears throat> I hope that happens for, for ever. I mean, I wouldn't mind if it happened for me because I'll definitely swoop in on this at a cheaper price. Am I actively looking for this card and hunting for it now? No, I haven't even opened up much of this product. I opened up one Pokemon Center ETB, one booster box, I have two more Pokemon Center ETBs that I don't want to open up, and then I have some I'm going to store away forever, essentially. So I haven't even ripped up <coughs> comparatively to other people that I know. I have not ripped that much of this set. So people are saying hype is going to take away from the value of this card. This is the second half of our video. This is where I disagree. Okay? And again, not the popular... Not what everybody wants to hear, but I'm here to be realistic with you guys. <clears throat> here to be very realistic. So we have Twilight Masquerade. This set took a little bit different of a journey than Surging Sparks, but a similar one in a way. So this Twilight Masquerade um, booster box, of course, started out super cheap. There was no hype behind this set. Nobody cared about it. They saw the Greninja and said, oh, Greninja with a crown? No, no, don't want that. Don't want that. The set comes out. It takes a little bit to pick up. It does not immediately have the big hype that Surging Sparks does. And I think this set helped set up uh, hype and FOMO for Surging Sparks because they saw how big of a card uh, <clears throat> Greninja was. So they're like, well, crap, maybe this one's going to be pretty big too. And I think that contributes a little bit into the hype and FOMO. So anyways, this booster box kind of went on a roller coaster, but very quickly and very steadily became in the 160s. And another thing to remember, I forgot to bring this up too. Surging Sparks, I cannot order any of it from Distro. It is completely out. It is completely gone. You can't get it. There's no restocking it. Your local LGS is not going to have Surging Sparks to order more of. So there's no way they're going to sell it at MSRP. That's not how that works. The demand is too high. You can't get more of it. So it's not going to be sold like that. 
Twilight Masquerade, same thing. I cannot order any of it from Distro anymore. It is dried out. Until they do a reprint or something major like that, you're not going to get any more of this. So anyways, 160s. We are in the 160s on this box. So looking at it, 155, 155, 155, 162. Lot, a lot in the 150s, but then a lot of 160s, 167. Kind of bouncing between the 150s, the 160s, 168. So this thing is definitely at MSRP, sometimes above MSRP, just flowing right around in there, okay? And this is well after its release, very well after its release, okay? It's been out for a minute. We've had other sets come out since this set that could have taken from the hype of it, and it is still at that price. It's still at that price. Think about that for a minute. Greninja kind of went on a roller coaster itself as well, but again, it started out kind of cheaper, like Pikachu, but very quickly caught on. Very quickly, people were like, whoa, hold on a minute. This guy with a fist crown is... <clears throat> cool and popular and in demand there's only 60 on tcg player right now and the price is on it like we have a 328 right there 315 318 328 319 328 349 lots between about the 310 ish 20 ish to 340 ish kicking around so this the one thing to remember this card never got as high as pikachu but has consistently held in the 310 to 328 range okay this card in set did not even have hype behind it and it's still that high it didn't drop down this card is still up there not dropping down <clears throat> still in great demand that's where we're at and we can't get restocks on it from distro now we're looking at PSA 10 listings, 669, 720, 699, 699, 719, 679, 679, 800, 700, 670, 685. And guys, we got to remember, this is another card that people didn't like because they don't like crowns. They don't like the terraforms. They don't like any of that stuff. And yet this card continues to still go up still going up and stays in a pretty modest range um kind of fluctuates between that 660 ish 699 750 ish range definitely fluctuate or fluctuates in that range people are still buying it people are still buying it there's a high demand for it still and it's still hitting those prices and this set has been out for quite some time at this point. So now we're sitting here going, hey, you know what? What about Mew? Well, you know what? Great question. Because that's another set that helps support our data. Paldean Fates and the Bubble Mew. So now looking at the Bubble Mew, okay? Paldean Fates came out a little while ago. And... A lot of people love this card, but the value just never made it. The value is just never there. Um, not like the current cards that are popping off. And I like this card a lot more than Pikachu. I like it a lot more than uh, Greninja. I, I love this. I would rather have a ton more of this card than any one of those other cards. I love this one. I think this one is fantastic. And now we're looking at it, and it starts out, it was like super cheap back in the day, 80-ish bucks. <coughs> kind of went on a roller coaster. And now is in the 170s. Yep, we're there now too. With the set, very much so older than uh, Surging Sparks. Much older than Surging Sparks, right? So, 177. 189, 179, 139, could have not been a good version of it or something, 179, 179, 175, 179, another 139 randomly, that's weird, 169, 183, 179, so <clears throat> to be honest, 
we're looking at a 175 to one, almost 190 card, okay? Think about that one. And then we have the PSA 10, okay? PSA 10, 600, 540, 580, 649, 610, 627, 663, 580. This card, currently not on a hype train. This set was never on a hype train. Um, this card was huge. Or, I mean, in my opinion, this card should have been more huge than Pikachu or anything else. The art is awesome. It's a shiny Mew. Um, the print quality of Paldean Fates was pretty rough. And so I've always been struggling to... I've always struggled to get good grades on these. I only have two. Um, this set did not even come close to having hype or FOMO. It was very easily, to, or it was very easy to get. I only, I think up until about last week, I could order up the booster bundles and get the display case. Now I can't. Distro is completely out. It was very readily available though, right up until about a week ago when this stuff started popping off. So if that's any indicator... A lot of it got bought up. So that's another one. Well outside of its hype. Didn't really get big hype. Didn't get big boosts. And even with Surging Sparks out right now, this card is very much so wanted. Very much so wanted. November 11th, recent sales. Going to the moon. So another thing to think about. Okay, and now we have Charizard. The 151 Charizard, the no-neck Charizard. Everyone complained, saying, wow, this artwork is so lame. You know, Charizard's so small in the picture. Just no-neck up in the sun. <coughs> um, just everyone thought that this was lame. Everyone was like, ah, this card, it's cool, whatever. Not my biggest hype card. I remember when I got one, I sold it for like three thirty in a PSA ten, um, and people were like, "Oh, that's a little expensive," and blah blah blah. But now look at it, two twenty nine near mint. Looking through the data, one eighty. There's a random one thirty four, but that could have been Japanese or who knows what. One sixty nine, one eighty five, one ninety nine, one ninety nine ninety nine, one eighty eight, one ninety, one ninety nine two hundred. 190, 229, 139, 190, 188. So, like, fluctuates in the high 180 to 190, peaks above 200. Okay? And that's raw. This card has been out for a long time. Um, this set has been out for a long time. And it just never really picked up until, boom, all of a sudden recently, people are like, hey, this is a really cool card. So, now we have eBay listings. And of course, we're looking at a couple of different things, but here's some current postings, all very expensive. And this is a PSA 10, obviously. So now we go down to sold. 585, 570. That's Japanese, so that doesn't count. Um, Got to sift through, I should have made the search parameters a little bit better, but you get an idea, 650 right there, November 11th, that was a day ago, someone paid 650 for it, um, so about 6 to 650, right, so again, this card, no one really liked it, didn't have a ton of hype behind it, and even with surging sparks eclipsing this current peak, still getting huge, so, to sum up a very long video, I apologize for the length, but a lot of people are complaining about current booster box prices. They want to factor in current demand and <clears throat> price of singles and things like that. And you know what? There's just a lot of hype, but even outside of the hype of surging sparks, there's a lot going on um, outside of surging sparks that will that helps prove that Pikachu is probably here to stay at a very high price. And if it does go down, cool. It's not going to be the $300 price point that it was. It's going to continue to go up from wherever it dips down. 
and that's just how it is. That's how collectibles are. That's how demand is. And with how few there are in the wild, the demand's going to stay peaked. Going to stay peaked. And I predict that even with prismatic evolutions, it's still going to stay big because we can't even restock on this stuff. We can't get more of it. So you're not going to see a ton of booster boxes flowing around. You're not going to see that stuff, guys. Because booster boxes, either stores are trying to dump them for the current price that they are, or people are holding them for an investment, like you should. If you're going to be holding something for what people like to say they invest in Pokemon, you got to hold on to it for a long time. That even means during its downs, um, its ups, its downs, you know, it goes on a roller coaster. It's not going to be perfect, but then, you know, a lot of people like to dump their stuff when it goes down, even just a little bit, they kind of get scared and almost like FOMO of getting this card, um, at a cheap, at its cheapest price and waiting on that and losing your opportunity to get it. Kind of like with investing, as soon as they see a small dip, they FOMO on pricing and say, oh no, dump all this stuff. I got a fire sale. But that's another video for another time. Um, yeah, guys, Pikachu, it's, it's, I don't think it's changing. So I've, I think I've driven that point home pretty well. Um, again, I'm just trying to keep it real with you guys. Keep expectations very realistic. And you know what? Pikachu probably is not the best time to buy into. And is there going to be a better time? Maybe, maybe not, but probably not. And that just means we have to get lucky and try on the next set, right? We got a lot of cool cards coming out in the future sets. A lot of people thought that this set wouldn't even do good, especially with a rocket set looming over everybody's heads at some point. And here's where we're at. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Again, not the fun answer, but the real answer. So I appreciate you guys. You all are awesome. Be good. And don't do anything crazy. And I'm sorry I coughed so much and had to make multiple edits and clips and stuff. And my baby was crying a ton. Super sorry about that. Had to get it all handled. I, I had to cough a ton. Um, my voice is dying. Ugh. Man, whatever plague is going around lately, I blame daycare. But you all have a good night.